Hello, let's see how to answer some GCSE biology exam questions on investigating the rate of photosynthesis. This set of questions is practical based. It requires us to know how to perform the investigations, to change the independent variables, to measure the dependent variables and to maintain the controlled variables. It then asks us to link all of this to the biological knowledge of photosynthesis. This question is an overview of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a chemical process in which the plant uses light energy to make its food in the form of glucose from carbon dioxide and water. We just have to select the correct balanced equation to describe photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, the plant takes in carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil via its roots. The waste product, oxygen, is released into the air while the glucose is used by the plant and converted into proteins, oils and other carbohydrates as the plant grows or is used in respiration to provide the energy. So overall the process can be summarised as carbon dioxide and water being converted into glucose and oxygen. The formulae can be written as CO2 plus H2O reacting to form C6H12O6 plus O2. When balanced, we can see that we need 6 CO2, 6 H2O, 6 O2, and therefore we can tick the third box. This question asks what type of reaction photosynthesis is. We can choose from aerobic, endothermic, exothermic, or oxidation. Let's look again at the reaction equation. We know that photosynthesis requires the energy supplied by light. So if we're supplying energy to the reactants as shown in the reaction profile, we can see that the products have a higher energy level than the reactants, which means the reaction must be endothermic. Energy is being taken in from the environment. Exothermic reactions, don't forget, release energy into the surroundings. To summarise the question so far then, photosynthesis is a reaction which uses light energy to join carbon dioxide and water in order to make plant food in the form of glucose. Are you hungry? Yes, I'd love a light snack. Um, if you two have quite finished, thanks. This next question introduces an investigation into the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. The apparatus is shown in the diagram here. So we have a tube of pondweed in sodium hydrogen carbonate solution, five centimetres away from a light source. The sodium hydrogen carbonate solution provides carbon dioxide to the plant. The rate of photosynthesis can be estimated by counting the bubbles of oxygen produced in one minute. The procedure is repeated with the tube at different distances from the lamp. We're told that counting bubbles isn't an accurate way to measure the rate of photosynthesis and we're asked to suggest two ways to measure it more accurately. So rather than count the bubbles, we could collect and measure the volume of gas produced. Or if we continue to count bubbles, we could do it over a longer period of time. Next we're told that the LED lamp does not get hot. LED lamps are very efficient and so waste very little energy in heating the surroundings. We then ask why a constant temperature is important. We know from chemistry that reaction rates are dependent on temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster the reactions. So any change in temperature will change the rate of photosynthesis and we wouldn't be able to tell if the rate was being affected by the light intensity. We also know from the enzymes topic that if temperature increases too much, the shape of the plant's enzymes may become distorted, or we say that the enzyme has been denatured. In this case, their substrates will no longer fit the active sites, and the biochemical reactions inside the plants will stop. Therefore, the plant will die, and the rate of photosynthesis will drop to zero. We can summarise all of this by saying a high temperature will denature the enzymes that control photosynthesis. The next question talks about the inverse square law to describe how light intensity depends on the inverse square of the distance from the light source. 
we have to explain how the light intensity changes as the distance of the pond weed from the light source is doubled, and we have to include some calculations. If we take the statement that light intensity L is proportional to 1 over d squared, we can see what happens when we double the distance from 5 cm to 10 cm by substituting the distance values into the equation. So when d is 5, d squared becomes 25, and 1 divided by 25 is 0 0.04. But when d is 10, d squared becomes 100, and 1 divided by 100 is 0 0.01. Similarly, we can see what happens when we double the distance from 10 cm to 20 cm by substituting these distance values into the equation. As we've just seen, when d is 10, d squared becomes 100, and 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. But when d is 20, d squared becomes 400, and 1 over 400 is 0 0.0025. In both cases, doubling the distance causes the light intensity to reduce by a factor of 4, or is quartered. Here, the student has produced a table of results. We are asked to predict the number of bubbles seen in one minute when the distance is increased to 40 cm, giving a reason. 40 cm is twice 20 cm. So the rate of photosynthesis at 40 cm distance should be quarter of that of 20 cm. So two bubbles would be produced because two is a quarter of eight. And at this distance, the light intensity would be very low. Lastly, we're asked to describe how the investigation might be changed to study the effect of carbon dioxide concentration on the rate of photosynthesis. We need to say how we would change the independent variable and identify two controlled variables. So let's put the figure 5 back up to help us with the answer. Instead of adjusting the distance from the light source, we would need to alter the concentration of sodium hydrogen carbonate solution in order to change the concentration of carbon dioxide available to the plant. This is the independent variable that we need to describe. There are a number of controlled variables that we would need to keep constant. We only need to identify two of them, but we could choose from the distance between the plant and the light source, the temperature of the plant or its surrounding solution, and the plant itself. You can't change the plant for a completely different one midway through the investigation. So that's it. Please make sure you stay in touch. You can get some great science content updates or plenty of revision tips by following me at plutoniumscience.com or via my Twitter at PU94Science. Since I'm recording this during National Tree Week, it might be a timely reminder to celebrate the role of trees and other plants in keeping our environment healthy. If trees gave off Wi-Fi signals, we'd be planting so many of them and would probably save the planet too. It's a shame then that they only produce the oxygen we breathe. And with that, I give you this four-leaf clover and hope I'm not barking up the wrong tree when I wish you good luck with the exams. Take care.